Ubiquiti released the U7 Pro Max Wi-Fi 7 access point a few weeks ago and I had to buy it to see if some of the weird design choices from the U7 Pro have been addressed. And I'm not very good at unboxing videos. This is the box and inside the box we find the access point covered by some sort of protective plastic cover. The U7 Pro Max seems to be about the same size as the U7 Pro and yes, the top remains made of plastic while the bottom section is metallic. I removed the protective cover for the ports and you can see the 2.5 gigabit port as well as a narrow canal. Hmm, it looks an awful lot like the fan exhaust on the U7 Pro. In the package we also get the mounting brackets as well as the necessary accessories for sealing and wall mounting. Now let's get on with the teardown. I didn't want to repeat the same mistakes as I did with the U7 Pro and I used the hair dryer to soften the glue a bit. I saw that there was already a small scuff on the side of the case and considering the whole Asus and Gamer Nexus fiasco, I wonder whether Ubiquiti would use this to void the warranty. Hopefully not. Then again I was fully prepared to destroy the case anyway. So I took the prying tool and to my surprise it was very easy to move around the case. After detaching the top part of the access point, I'm fairly sure that Ubiquiti took it a bit more easy with the glue, so it's not a coincidence that the teardown process was easier. We should now be able to see the antennas that are connected to the top plate and we do need to remove the four screws to move forward. I detached the PCB from the metallic bottom part of the case and there it is! We got a fan! Again! I am fairly sure that a lot of people hoped that Ubiquiti would repent and go with a passive cooling system, but it does seem that the engineering team prepared both the U7 Pro and the U7 Pro Max at the same time, so the fan remained. I am curious whether an enterprise version would go fanless. I suppose that the silver lining is that it's easier to access the fan on the Max version and can also easily replace it if it gets defective in the future. It's just a standard 12 volt fan. Looking back at the PCB, I am sure that I will have to remove the antennas, but first let's take out the four screws, keeping it attached to the top antenna board. After that, I started detaching the antenna connectors, but I noticed that Ubiquiti applied some glue on top of them. The excuse is always that it's a shockproof measure, but how many times does your access point get kicked around? In my case, it's pretty much never. It just makes the teardown more difficult. I suppose I should have been more gentle because I managed to detach the entire connector from the PCB on one antenna cable. That's great news. We'll try to fix that later. Anyway, I took them all out and could see the rear side of the PCB. There are two main components here and one is the 4GB of eMMC memory from Kingston, the other is the 8MB flash memory from MXIC. Then I returned to the front side and started removing the aluminum covers. It was more difficult than expected and I had to make sure to not damage any nearby components. I eventually got them out and could finally see the other set of main components. We're not done because I noticed a very strange part. It appears to be an M.2 AE adapter and the chipset that's embedded on it is a Qualcomm RF transceiver and I'm pretty sure it's used for that real-time spectral analysis for enhanced channel selection feature that Ubiquiti added on the U7 Pro Max. That about concludes this teardown. I will soon post a review and test video, so don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you next time.